Ayam Kenan Doğru. Today we are going to talk about stainless steel. So our subject is what is stainless steel. Before I talk about stainless steel, I would like to talk about what is steel. So if I describe steel, sorry guys, again. Steel is a iron and carbon alloy which contains this is minimum carbon content and this is maximum. If we have more than two percent carbon in our carbon uh, iron and carbon alloy, that means it's not uh, steel don't call steel, it becomes cast iron, which is more breathable than the steel, which doesn't have good mechanical properties. But now let's talk about stainless steel, or the difference between steel and stainless steel. Stainless steel has a very strong resistance for corrosion, env corrosion environment, or it doesn't get rust in atmosphere because of its different property. Now, this property is, it comes from chromium, these are first very important element and second one is nickel. If I draw here a graph relation between percentage of chromium and corrosion rate. Meter year. You will see that graph. So that means if we increase the amount of chromium in uh, our stainless steel, so we get the less corrosion rate. That means our material will have stronger resistance for the corrosion environment. That comes from uh, now. This our material material which is steel let's say iron and carbon alloy and our second material is stainless steel stainless steel which is iron, carbon, chromium alloy. When it's exposed to atmosphere, the fir first one, uh, iron makes a chemical compound with oxygen, so we get iron oxide. So that means our material gets rust. But in the second one, because of uh, because relation between iron and oxygen and between chromium and oxygen, the second one, chromium and oxygen has very strong relation between each other. So chromium uh, will show the first reaction uh, with the oxygen. Therefore, we will get chromium oxide, a thin layer on our material. Therefore, it doesn't get rust or it has very strong corrosion resistance. Besides using chromium and nickel in our stainless steel material, we need sometimes we need we might need some other uh, alloy elements. These are alloying elements. For example, aluminium, silicon, manganese, molybdenum, vanadium, titanium, and so on. For example, if you remember from the metallurgy, such as iron and sulfur inclusion, 
in the boundaries and it, it might cause really, really big problem in our structure. So for that reason, sometimes we use manganese. Manganese has, the, uh, has stronger relation with the sulfur. So if you add our alloy manganese, it will take the sulfur. So we get rid of the iron and sulfur inclusion. Another reason, for example, silicium, as you know, silicium oxide compound, so it removes oxygen. So now again, let's get back to the chromium and nickel. Chromium minimum content is. Ten point five percent. If you look at the commercial stainless steel, that's our minimum content. We can't uh, use less than this because then it doesn't mean stainless steel. So nickel, for example, X, Y, and Z structures. We have ferritic structure. If we had a five percent nickel, such as, you will get a duplex stainless steel. Duplex stainless steel means it has two different microstructure. One of it is ferritic structure and uh, beside that austenitic structure. So if we had 8% nickel then we will get austenitic microstructure. So that means nickel mainly it's it's to promote austenitic structure. That's why we need nickel. So that's all for today, guys. I hope I didn't forget anything. Uh, that was uh, just a summary because stainless steel is a very, very uh, broad uh, subject to talk about, to study. So in the very next uh, future, uh, I'm planning to make other videos about stainless steel. So I hope you enjoyed my lesson. See you next time. Bye.